Well, on to another major story this evening. Uh, clear today that, that the pain will continue, but at least this marked the end of the legal process for two Ontario families connected by tragedy. Marco Muzo has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for driving drunk and killing three children and their grandfather last September. The 29-year-old will get credit for time already served, and he will be eligible for parole after serving one-third of his sentence. He is banned from driving for 12 years after he's released. Muzo admitted to being impaired when he crashed into a minivan carrying members of the Neville Lake family. Outside the courthouse today, the children's mother brought a photo album of her family describing the grief of taking her children off life support. That's Millie and Harry. They joined their hands together. They pushed their beds together because they asked me when I decided I had to turn the machines off so Millie's heart wouldn't explode. I couldn't pick which baby to turn off the machines first. So I said, can you put them together, please? So they put them together and Edward and I crawled into bed with them. The CBC's Natalie Kalanda was inside the courtroom just north of Toronto and earlier this evening I asked her to describe what it was like as the judge sentenced Muzo. Well, as you can imagine, very emotional, Ian. Jennifer Neville Lake, the mother of these three children, the woman who also lost her father in this crash, was sobbing as the judge was reading the details of what happened, the injuries to her children and her father. She was shaking at times, but unable to make a sound, wanting to be respectful of the judge. So she was silently sobbing, which in a way you can imagine made it even more powerful. The emotion that you could tell was coming through her body as she was listening to this. Her husband, Edward, had his arm around her. He was holding her, trying to provide some comfort. But as you can imagine, there is very little comfort for her and for Edward, her husband, in this situation. Their three children, all under the age of 10, are gone, or under the age of nine, I should say, are gone, as well as her father. The Muzo family was in court as well. They also broke down as Marco Muzo was led away in handcuffs to begin his sentencing. His fiance was also there. They didn't say anything to reporters. They simply left in a car that was waiting for them as they were escorted by a number of security, private security guards uh, that were helping them through, uh, trying to avoid the media and sort of the chaos has been around this case, Ian. And Jennifer Neville Lake, when she finally found what the sentence uh, was, 10 years, uh, here's part of her reaction. All I can keep thinking in my head is my son never made it to 10 years. Daniel was killed when he was 9 years, 7 months, and 24 days. His sentence is 10 years, and none of my children saw 10 years. None. And so, Natalie, what did the judge say about why she chose a sentence of 10 years? Well, Ian, she said there was a lot of aggravating and mitigating factors in this case. The mitigating factors being that Marco Muzo did plead uh, or pleaded guilty to these charges, that he is a first-time offender in terms of impaired driving. So the fact that those uh, things were in his corner helped her in terms of come to this sentence of 10 years. She also said that the copious, the dozens of letters from his supporters, his friends, co-workers, uh, family members that were submitted to the judge on his behalf were taken into account. But there were also many aggravating factors, the number of people who were killed, the age of many of these victims. And most importantly, she said the fact that he had a choice in this, that there were other options when he came back from his bachelor party in Miami via private plane. He was drinking on the plane. He got behind the wheel. He could have called a cab. He could have called a limousine. He could have called a friend or a family member. The fact that this didn't have to happen. He had a choice. And in that moment, he chose to drink and drive. And these are the devastating consequences. As the judge said, an entire family wiped out in this one crash. Natalie Collad outside the courthouse in Newmarket, Ontario. Thank you. Well, as we often do on this program, let's turn to Eric Gattardi for some legal analysis, a veteran criminal defense lawyer. What do you make of this sentence? Well, I mean, it's a tough sentence from one of the most respected judges in the country. I think, um, you know, there's always going to be people who are unhappy with the quantum of sentence. Some will be uh, think it's too little. You know, many people might think it's, uh, it's too much. Uh, but sentencing is extremely difficult, especially in a tragic case like this when a lot of deaths uh, arise from conduct that wasn't intentional, right? Obviously this individual 
had no intention of causing the deaths when he left the airport that morning. Uh, the decision he made was to get in the car having alcohol in his blood and driving. And so that's the conduct that's being sensed, not necessarily the consequences, although the consequences do form part of the analysis as aggravating factors. But you know there are people watching right now. There were people, no doubt, in the courtroom uh, earlier today who look at this and say, 10 years, four deaths, three little children, it just doesn't seem right. Right. And, and I understand those feelings, and certainly people in the family and close to the family are going to feel that no matter what. But people need to understand that you're not, it's not a formula. It, there's no correlation between the number of years and, and the value of someone's life. You know, 10 years, 20 years, you know, execution, right? Nothing would bring these children back from the dead. Nothing would make this family whole again. So what's the purpose? It's to denounce this kind of conduct, to potentially deter others from doing it again. And, and again, this person got 10 years, and, and people who commit second-degree murder get 10 years. So it's on par with intentional killing, even though, uh, by definition, this offense isn't intentional killing. What does 10 years mean? 10 years uh, is, is the sentence, but almost certainly not 10 years in prison. Right. Well, and I know a lot, a lot of people will focus on that too. Oh, he got 10 years, but he'll be out in one or two years. That's a bit of an exaggeration. You know, how the parole system operates, you know, he's going to be eligible for parole after a certain amount of time that's less than the full 10 years, and he'll be eligible for day parole, and if he does well in there and takes programs, you know, he'll be eligible for a more robust form of parole. But you know, that's up to the corrections board and the parole board, uh, and he may not get it, and uh, it depends on how he does in there. And so, he, you know, he has to work hard to try to demonstrate that he has the right attitude and the right preconditions to get out and be eligible for that parole and get out. So it's not guaranteed. It's not a get-out-of-jail, you know, get-out-of-jail-free card. You deal with a lot of people accused of various crimes, some who are guilty, some who are not. You understand their mindset. What would it take then, if not a 25-year a sentence, what would it take to try to deter the next person from jumping into a car so drunk and, and killing people? Well, I mean, I th there's no one answer, right? I mean, I think it's all about education. I think you know, my generation and younger, I think, understands a whole lot better the dangers of impaired driving. And I think the culture around drinking and driving has changed substantially from my parents' generation to my own and to my kids. Um, but, you know, I think the question is really one of enforcement. Like, if you knew when you left your house, you left the bar, 100% of the time you were going to be caught, there'd be zero impaired driving. Now, we can't do that. There can't be a policeman on every corner, but it's a balancing act of, you know, harsh sentences, enforcement, people knowing there's a good chance they're going to be caught and they're going to face serious consequences if they are caught. Eric Attardi, nice to have your analysis. Thanks, Ian.